Hi, I'm Lindy Lane. Welcome back to my art studio. Today I'm going to be talking to you about this drawing, Seventeen Spring. It's the beginning of a series called Seventeen, depicting my youngest daughter of five children turning 17 and her 17th year of life. This piece has won multiple ribbons, including Best of Show at Conroe Art League and second place at Lone Star Art Guild. Today I'm going to be demonstrating a few tips on how to draw realistic looking hair with polychromous pencils on white stonehenge paper by Legion Paper. For this demonstration, I've already completed the face and a large section of hair. I work with a large variety of colors to achieve this color of blonde. Some of the primary colors are brown ochre, raw umber, and nougat, as well as some warm grays. I also use walnut brown, dark sepia, black, even some maybe unconventional colors like light blue and green gold. Keep in mind that the colors that you use will change depending on the reference photo and your subject and the lighting. As you can see here, I start by using my pencil to lightly sketch in the pattern and the direction that the hair lays. And I'm starting with the lightest color for this section of hair. And before I get too far along, I should mention that I'm using a piece of glassine paper under my hand to prevent smudging the work that I've already created. It also protects the paper from the oils from my skin for archival purposes. Since color pencil is a very slow medium, I'm going to speed up the video starting now. So I'm continuing to draw the hair in a sketch-like fashion. I'm looking closely at my reference photo to make sure that the hair lays the correct way to help capture the movement of the hair. As I move along, I press a little harder for the darker sections of hair and lighter for the lighter sections of hair. I'm not necessarily worried about switching pencils at this point. I'm mostly just laying out the values and the direction of the hair. When looking at your reference photos, sometimes it helps to sort of blur your eyes or defocus your eyes so you can see the dark values versus the light values and make sure that you're copying that pattern closely so the hair looks realistic. I'm going to speed the video up a little bit faster now. And you can see the process is the same, repeating the sketching motion and laying out the direction of the hair using the same light pencil and then switching to a darker one. In this case, nougat. Using the nougat pencil, I'm repeating the same process I did with the lighter pencil, just going over the areas where I see the darker values in the hair from the reference photo. And then I'm switching to a warm gray 3 and repeating the process. It may seem strange to use warm grays in the hair color. However, once all the colors are blended together, you won't notice the gray. Next, I'm using the burnt sienna to brighten up the section of hair and also add a depth to it. Light brown hair and dark blonde hair actually contains so many colors. I can easily use approximately 20 to 30 colors in just the hair alone. The lightest grays, white, and ivory are used for the highlights in the hair. Shades of blue and purple, caput mortem violet, dark sepia, and black are used for the shadows. As a general rule, I start from the lightest colors and move my way to the darkest, but that doesn't always apply. Sometimes you'll see me break that rule and start laying down the dark first and then filling it in with light. I'll often rotate from dark to light and then back to dark again and back to light again. But what is consistent is the blending of many layers of color. I always use my reference photo as a guide so I know which areas need to be darker and what color to apply where. It's also important to have sharp pencils, especially for the top layers. The first layers that you lay down, it can be a little bit dull. But the more layers you build up, the sharper your pencil should be. The values are very important when you're drawing hair. The more accurate your values are will help to determine how realistic the hair looks. As you can see, I'm laying in the dark area behind her head, which is creating that depth and actually making her head look like it's laying on the ground. It may take many passes over a section of hair to get the depth and the color and the value accurate. I don't stop layering until I'm 100% happy with the section of hair, and then I'll move on to a new section. Sometimes I'll come back to the previous section as well. I also use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser, which is a very tiny, hard eraser that allows me to pick up tiny little strands of hair to create those highlights. 
While some artists use an X-Acto knife to add highlights in the hair, I find that a very hard eraser is sufficient, especially when working with polychromos pencils on stone hinge paper by Legion paper. Blending and smoothing the colors together is important to keep the hair from looking stringy. The more lines that you leave in the hair, the stringier the hair will look. But there's a balance because leaving some of the stringy look in also is what makes it look like hair. For me personally, I find that blonde hair is one of the most difficult colors to capture. Especially the dark blonde because there are so many different colors that make up the final look. Zooming in a little closer, you can see that the top section of hair is starting to look more realistic, while here at the bottom, I'm starting again with that sketching process of laying out the direction of the hair with a lighter pencil. And then I continue the process of layering up the pencils until the color matches a reference photo. I try to stay in an approximate four to five square inch area. Once that area looks good, I can move on to the next. By working in just one small area at a time, it helps me stay focused and not lose my place. It's a good idea to step back every now and then and look and see if you have the values accurate. You can do this by blurring your eyes and kind of seeing where the dark parts are and the light parts are, and then looking closely at the reference photo and making sure that they match. Even if your drawing doesn't match your reference photo exactly, keeping the values accurate will make sure that the hair looks realistic. Occasionally going over the darker colors with a lighter pencil will help soften the hair and make it smoother. Drawing hair so that it looks realistic takes practice. I recommend that you take scratch paper and practice these techniques separately before you start your drawing. If you aren't sure what color to use in the hair that you're drawing, select a variety of colors and hold them up to the reference photo, looking to see what colors pop out at you. Polychromos pencils on stone hinge paper are an excellent combination. With practice, before long, you'll be drawing hair that looks very realistic. I hope this mini tutorial was helpful. Be sure and stay tuned for more upcoming videos from Wendy Lane Art.